Okay, Wayne, you've seen the front picture and the steel shifts that I took, but we're going to sort of make this a video and explain some things uh, about the property. It is 1.01 acres of land. Uh, I'm standing on the uh, north side of the house, so the, the house is facing north. Uh, it's late afternoon, and um, uh, so the sun obviously sitting in the west. I like that kind of exposure and I'll tell you why if if you ever decide to put a pool in the back you'll have uh, you'll have full sun exposure uh, from east to west on this particular property. If it traveled from if the house was facing uh, east and west then uh, the, the house is going to shade a pool, the pool a good part of the day so um, that's the, about the main uh, reason. Uh, there is also the benefit of the, the sun being less exposure on the house and the sides than it would be on the front. So um, everybody has their own theories and their own preferences, but that's that on that. Uh, there, are, uh, there is going to be one lot, one acre lot on the other side of, of uh, this house. And then we'll take a drive in a moment, but uh, uh, down uh, yonder, as they would say down, out here in Plant City, is the cul-de-sac. And you can see that right there. Each one of these signs then would be a one acre lot coming along the way here. Okay, so that's pretty much the exterior, except I am going to show you the backyard now. All right, I'm on the right side of the house, and uh, which would be the uh, west side, so I've got the sun to my back. It's a nice day here. Temperature is really nice. A uh, nice uh, spring April day. Um, I'm at uh, pretty much the beginning of the backyard, west side. And as I mentioned, the backyard is, has not been sodded. So we're now scanning the backyard. There's the well. And now we'll talk about no backyard neighbors, why I was saying what I was saying. I'm at the back side of the property. Uh, this is the south side again. And sort of gives you an idea that the one acre has got lots of room. You got seven dogs, you could use a backyard like this. Okay, this is the house that I was telling you uh, owns the uh, acreage that goes back. Here it is right here. Now I'm right in the middle of the subject property, so this is uh, what we would see from the back sliding glass doors. And this land right here belongs to this house right there and uh, there's their um, storage shed and uh, you can't even hardly see uh, the back of the house but that house it, its house placement on this property is really um, all the way uh, towards the front of Wiggins Road and so what they chose to do is they chose to have a lot of backyard. And so this is all of their backyard, which is what you're, you're when I say you're going to have no backyard neighbor, that's why I say that. You've just got some trees and some mowed land and way in the back, you've got their septic. Now, let's spin back around over here. That's the, the neighbor would be so you're going to have one neighbor on each side okay I'm actually uh, I mean you can even see my reflection here I'm actually on the lanai that's looking into the sliders into the back of the house now I'll turn around on the lanai 180 degrees and now you see the back area that I'm talking about so you actually do not have anything behind you. If we go over to the other property to our left, they do have a backyard neighbor, but it's sort of distant. It's a small little house, but that one would be bordering 
the property on the left, not this, the, not this house. So this is what we have. Now the front of the house does have a sprinkler system and uh, a little bit of landscaping. With time that'll all fill in a little bit, but other than a little stick trees here and there, it's wide open for whatever type of landscaping that you might want to do. We've got a stacked stone uh, elevation on the columns, the two columns, and also on the garage corners. One of the advantages of video that stills can't show is it, we can give you an idea of the layout. So here we go on the entrance. And so our foyer area, which is tiled, to our right, we have the formal dining room. And as I reverse now to our left, we have a den or a study. Uh, it's actually large enough that it could be a bedroom, but it's not on the county as a bedroom because it does not have a closet. But um, some people have made these into bedrooms. It does have a double pocket door. So it could be closed off. We leave the foyer and the den and the dining and we come into the great room area. High ceilings, high volume ceilings. To the right of the entrance would be the kitchen. We got the breakfast nook which we'll go take a closer look at. And to the left there's a door in the back. This is a split plan. So over on this side we'll have the master uh, suite. And on this side we have the other bedrooms, the other two bedrooms. So let's take a look now at the kitchen. Get a little bit of light on the subject. Okay, we've got solid wood cabinets, 42 inch. It also has the upgraded uh, uh, crown molding across the top. This is uh, better than level one. I don't know how many levels, but level one would just be a flat piece across here, but this has got uh, an inset to it. Um, it, it of course could, there's higher levels but it's not the lowest level. We have a tile backsplash, under cabinet lighting, we have the granite countertop, uh, Rad Builders never puts entry level Rad in, oh, Rad, that's Rad Builders never puts entry level um, um, Okay, help me guys. <laughs> okay, you, you get it. You get it. Alright, wide drawers. Lots of drawers. We got a uh, center island. Double stainless sink. Mowing. Um, Fig, uh, plumbing fixtures, breakfast bar, actually a, a long breakfast bar so it can really accommodate uh, either quite a few stools or quite a few uh, party leaners, people that can lean up on the breakfast, uh, breakfast bar here. Breakfast nook Looking out onto the back, um, the building codes here have changed. This is a double pane thermal. It's standard because of ordinance now. It's an energy efficient system. Master. Now I think I may have the floor plan dimensions on this. 
Um, this is a, a um, I'm going to say it's not a giant master. I hope you can tell that. Uh, it's sufficient. If you're looking for a huge master, um, this is like average. Okay, it's not tiny, not large, it's very average. Okay, this would be the wall where the... Now we've got the master bath. And I really like this master bath. There's a lot of things that I like about it. For example, um, I like the fact that there's an upgraded tile here with tile inset. And coordinated tile. Upgraded, or uh, I should say not entry level anyway, fixtures. So I really like this shower. It's not tiny and confining. Then we move along to a nice garden tub with the columns next to it. Again the matching fixtures and the, the tile theme follows around. We have a double sink, um, granite countertop, makeup area, makeup drawer. And then we have a good sized, um, let me find the light, we have a good sized master walk-in. Okay, just another perspective, I am uh, just left the master, I'm standing in the breakfast nook area, and this is the view from the breakfast nook looking into the great room area. And now we're going to be heading <clears throat> heading on over to the other split, of which we have two bedrooms. Also notice that one of the things that Rad Builders, they put the five and a half inch uh, baseboard in. That's a standard for, feature for them, and it is an upgrade for most other builders. This is throughout the house. Of course, crown molding, crown molding would be an upgrade. This uh, this house has none, and it would have been an upgrade at the time. Nice thing is the second bedroom, uh, second bathroom, excuse me, also has granite, and it also has the upgraded tiles. So, uh, I guess what I'm saying on the second bathroom is is that it's not like uh, got the Formica and the white cheesy tile or um, a fiberglass shower. It's, it's a nice second bathroom. Again, nice fixtures. And now we go to the, uh, I call this really the second bedroom because it's a little bit larger and it has a lot more closet space. Instead of just the one closet, it's actually got two dual closets. Most secondary bedrooms would have this kind of a closet or maybe a little bit wider. This has actually got two and uh, or two doors and it goes all the way across. And again, a nice fixture, not the not the a uh, little bubble light. There's a lot of energy uh, advantages to, um, to buying a house that's constructed in 2013. 2012 was the last time this area had some major um, <clears throat> uh, permitting requirements um, and in the, um, in the area of uh, energy efficiency, most of them. I already mentioned the double pane glass. Uh, you, you have uh, higher requirements on air conditioning now regarding SEER, the SEER rating, also the air handling, uh, air handler, and what's required there. Um, in the attic, if I could show you, which I can't get into now, or maybe I can, but let's see if we can do that. I'm gonna put you on. Okay, this does not have one of the pull down um, uh, ladders so I can't get up there but what you would find up there is radiant barrier all along the interior of the 
roof, and then you have increased insulation that was both required as uh, uh, building code requirements in 2012. Um, that has greatly in, in, introduced or increased the R efficiency and so the uh, power bills, it's all, all related to um, our ecology and, and as far as I'm concerned, our economy of our, our personal wallet. Um, I'm going to sort of wrap this up, but uh, another thing that I'll mention as far as economy is, is that you can uh, water that big front and backyard. Well, backyard, once you put some sprinklers in it, uh, it's on well, as I would mentioned. And so um, you've just got a little bit of electric bill to do that because on well you're not going to have uh, the water bill to water this big, big, uh, big yard. Um, it's $100, I believe, if I'm correct, it's $100 a year. I know it's very low. I believe it's $100 a year for HOA. There's no CDD. And now I want to show you a little bit of the neighborhood and the area. And if you're still with me, because I know this is a long video, but I also want to make sure that I've left nothing out, we'll show you the area as well. Okay, I'm actually sitting right in front of the house, and this is the... Uh, I'm heading in the direction of Knoxville as soon as I put it in drive. Heading in the direction of, of the end of Knoxville and the cul-de-sac that I mentioned. So we're going to have... I'll count these as we go along the way. We got one house. Um, that's two. Three. Three before we get to the cul-de-sac. I'm not sure how many I can... How many? I don't see signs there, so I'm not sure how many. Let's say they squeezed in two at the end of the cul-de-sac. Now let me stop right about here. Um, let me zoom over to this street here. Uh, off in the distance, we'll see a car go by every now and then, right at the end of that fence. Let me see if it does it. Actually, if Oh, uh, where are they? Where are you, cars? All right, those cars there. Um, that is called County Line Road, so you can Google it and see. The benefit of that is that we're far enough away that it's, you know, it doesn't mean anything to us, but we're close enough to a drive that on County Line Road, you can go north and get to... Um, Highway 60, excuse me, north and get to I-4 and Highway 92, or you can go south and you can get to Highway 60. Bottom line is this is real good ac access for uh, travel purposes. Uh, you want to go to Orlando, you want to go to Tampa, um, you just, you've got, you know, easy access on that county line road. All right, that's it for uh, Wiggins. That was funny. As I was turned around the cul-de-sac after showing you the end of the cul-de-sac, I saw two cars pull in. One's an agent, and he's showing the house. I had to stop and go in and tell them don't sell it. <laughs> Just joking. I had stopped in to see if they had any questions. So anyway, two showings. Okay, Wayne, I was telling you on the phone that this is country, and it, and it is. Uh, like I said earlier, we've got good access to get to out of the country. But this is, uh, this is what we're talking about, is big lots out here. Um, I met these people. That, that, this house, I forget how old this house is, they told me. That's, that house is like in its third generation of family. I was talking to the folks there. We're coming up to a road called um, Old Mulberry Road. Uh, Mulberry is a town in um, Polk County, which is what we're very close to. We're in Hillsburg County, but that county line road that I pointed out earlier 
is what separates uh, the two counties. And we have uh, some really nice homes along this stretch. You're gonna you're gonna find a, a lot of uh, I, I don't know if I can sh if you can see it from here. You're gonna find a lot of livestock out here, cattle, horses. So it's not like you know we're in an area of nothing but double wides. We've got some nice homes in the area. Here's an older home, but small. And yes, we've got double wides. It's real quiet out here, and uh, we're just crossed through Sparkman Road. Here's a real pretty house up here on my on my left as we go by. Personally, I sort of like the mixture. Here's what we used to call an old cracker house. We got farms out in the area and uh, uh, strawberries, of course. Over here that we're getting ready to uh, pass by is a big wholesale grower of all kinds of shrubbery. I'm going to uh, spare you a little bit of time. There's more nice homes, but I'm going to spare you some time and get you over to 60 now. I mean, uh, to County Line Road. All right, I'm approaching County Line. If I turn left, it would take me to I-4. And I could go to Tampa or Orlando there. And if I turn right, that takes me to Highway 60. And Highway 60 will take me to uh, Mulberry, it takes me to Bartow, and Brandon, Valrico, uh, Lithia, all of those communities on the east side of Tampa. And we're going to go ahead and just get you on to 60 and then wrap this up and spare you the rest of the, the rest of the time. So we got a nice four lane road. Now, um, I took you on Old Mulberry Road. And that, but there's a more direct shot to this road, so uh, that little extra drive was just to show you that country road. All right, I hope this helped you um, get a feel for the area and an uh, understanding of the house and, and that particular street and what's going to soon be a community. Thanks for your time. Thanks for, if you're still there, thanks for hanging in. Blessings.